So 4.4, we're going back to our favorite, which is factoring. Today, we're going to talk about three different types of factoring. The first one is GCF, which we've done before. Second one is the sum and difference of cubes. So that one's a new one, which we'll talk about it today. And then the third one is grouping, again, which we've done before. So two out of the three, we've done these before. We're just going to practice them today. So in the past, we factored quadratic polynomials. Does anybody remember what a quadratic polynomial is? X to what power? X to the second power. So we have factored quadratics. Now we're going to factor higher degrees. So it'll be like X cubed, X to the fourth power, stuff like that. When we factor, we have to make sure that we factor completely. So the difference between what we're doing now versus what we did in the beginning of the year is that a lot of these can be factored more than once. Most of them can be factored more than once. So just make sure they are factored completely. So always check once you factor, see if you can factor any more. Let's take a look at example one A. So these are the examples where we have to take out a GCF. Looking at example A, what's my GCF? X. So I'm going to divide them all by X. Take that X and put it on the outside. What am I left with when I take out an X? Perfect. X squared minus 4X minus 5. Now we want to see, can I factor this anymore? Do I have two factors of negative 5 that add to negative 4? Negative 5 and positive 1. So in my parentheses, I would put x minus 5 and x plus 1. And then we can't forget, since I took out that GCF of x in the beginning, I have to put that in my answer. So anytime you take out the GCF, make sure you put it in your answer. So let's look at B. Do I have a GCF here? What's my GCF? 3y to the third power. Both of them have at least 3y's in them that I can take out. And then both 3 and 48 are divisible by 3. So I'm going to take out a 3y cubed. So that's going to go on the outside. What am I left with? y squared minus 16. Now let's see. Can I factor this anymore? Are we sure? Awesome. What's special about both y squared and 16? They're both perfect squares. So this is the difference of squares. The difference of squares we factor into a plus b and a minus b. So y squared minus 16 would be y minus what? 4 and y plus 4. Does it matter which one goes first, the plus or the minus? No. And then we can't forget, we took out that GCF in the beginning, so I have to put that in my answer. What's my GCF in C? 5z squared. Awesome. So I'm going to take out a 5z squared from all of them. I'm going to put that on the outside. What am I left with? Awesome. Z squared plus 6Z plus 9. Now we want to see, can we factor this anymore? Do I have two factors of 9 that add to 6? 3 and 3. So what's going to go into my parentheses? So Z plus 3 and Z plus 3. And then I can't forget about that 5Z squared on the outside. Now we can also write this, since I have two z plus 3's, I could say 5z squared times z plus 3 squared. You can write it either way. This way is fine. If you want to write it, since there's two of them, a squared, you can do it that way too. All right, 
right, let's take a look at, we're going to skip one and let's do two. What's my GCF for two? So they're both divisible by three, and then how many n's can I take out? So three n to the fifth power, perfect. So that's gonna go to the outside. What am I left with when I divide both of these by three n to the fifth power? n squared minus 25. Perfect, so we took out our GCF. Can I factor this anymore? Awesome, this is the difference of squares again. So it factors into a plus and a minus. So what's gonna go into my parentheses? Awesome, n plus five and n minus five. And then we can't forget about that GCF that we took out in the beginning. All right, let's look at three. What's my GCF? A, a m to the third power, perfect. I can divide all of them by a m to the third power. So I'm gonna put that on the outside. What am I left with? M squared minus two m. What's a m cubed divided by a m cubed? One. It doesn't just go away. This is equal to one. It's like five divided by five is one. If you divide a number by the same thing, it is one. It doesn't disappear. So be careful with that. Now let's see, can we factor this anymore? Do I have two factors of one that add to negative two? Negative one and negative one. So what's gonna go into the parentheses? M minus one and M minus one. And what else am I missing? 8m cubed, the GCF that I took out in the beginning. So this would be my answer. Or, again, this is another one where we could write it as m minus 1 squared, because there's two of them. Either way is fine. You can write it twice, or you can write it squared. I'm going to do an extra example on the side, because you'll see a question like this in the homework. So let's say we had 2x squared plus 2x squared plus 9x plus 10. How would I factor something like this? Can I divide everything by 2? No, because no, I can't divide 9 by 2. I have to multiply the first times the last. So 2 times 10 would be 20. What are two factors of 20 that add to 9? 4 and 5. So in my parentheses here, I have x plus 4 and x plus 5. What do I have to, have to, have to, have to remember to do? Divide. Since we started by multiplying that 2, we can't forget to go back in and divide. So what does my first parentheses change to? x plus 2, and the second one, 2x plus 5. Remember, when we can't divide, we just put it right in front of the x. So here I could simplify. The second one I couldn't, so I have to move it in front of the x. So there's some questions like this in the homework where you can't take out a GCF, but the number in front of your x squared term is not 1, so you have to multiply the first times the last, and don't forget to go back in and divide. So next we're going to look at the sum and difference of two cubes. So cubes, we have perfect cubes, are the same number when you multiply it by itself would be a perfect cube. So like one cubed would be one. So one is a perfect cube. Two cubed is what? Eight. eight. So eight is a perfect cube. Three cubed? 27. So 27 is a perfect cube. 4 cubed, 64, 5 cubed, 125, 6 cubed, 216. I don't think that they get much higher than this, but especially the first five, these are important to know. 
So these sum of cubes, when we are adding two perfect cubes, we use this formula here. So we need to find what A is and what B is, and we would plug that in just to this formula. So it would be A plus B times A squared minus AB plus B squared. Only when it's perfect cubed. Yes, you have to memorize these two formulas. It's different when it's the difference of cubes. So when we are subtracting, we're using this formula, which they're pretty much the same thing. The only difference is the sum of cubes goes plus minus plus for the signs, and the difference of cubes goes minus plus plus. So they both have two plus signs, but it just depends on if you're subtracting the two perfect cubes or adding them. Subtraction one has the subtraction first. So these two formulas you have to memorize for the next quiz. So let's look at the next two examples. So example A. Is this the sum or difference of cubes? The difference. So we're using our second formula, which goes A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared. Now our first term is our a cubed. So if a cubed is x cubed, what is just a? X. x. So x is going to go into all of the a's in my formula. If b cubed is 125, what is just b? 5. five. Awesome, because 5 cubed gives me 125. So now I'm going to take my x and my 5 and plug them into all the a's and b's. So what would go in my first parentheses? x minus 5. X minus five. Then what would a squared be? x squared. x squared. Plus what's a times b? 5x. Plus what's b squared? And what's 5 squared? 25. So this would be our answer. This can't be factored anymore. Sometimes we may think that you can factor 25 to get 5, but the signs just don't work out. So this cannot be factored anymore. So this one's the sum of cubes. So in my formula, I have a, b, a squared, a, b, and b squared. What are my signs going to be when it's plus? Plus, minus, plus. Minus, plus. Now, is 16 a perfect cubed? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, it wasn't on that list that we had of perfect cubes. Okay. It's not a perfect cubed. But do I have a GCF that I could take out? What's my GCF? Can I divide 54 by 4? Can I divide 54 by 8? Can I divide 54 by 16? No. So my GCF is 2. 2 what? 2s squared. So I'm going to take out that 2s squared. Just leave it on the outside because it will end up on the outside of our answer. And let's divide. So when I take out 2s squared, what am I left with? 8s cubed plus... 27. Now is 8 a perfect cube? Yes. And is 27 a perfect cube? Yes. So now we have the sum of cubes. So now we can use our formula. So if a cubed is 8s cubed, what is just a? To what? 2s. Can't forget about the variable part because we need that s cubed too. Just like the last one, we had a cubed was x cubed, so a is x. Can't forget about the variable. Wait, a cubed is s? A cubed is 8s cubed. It's this whole thing. So not only do we have to find what, our, what cubed gives us 8, I have to figure out what cubed gives me s cubed, which is just s. And then also b cubed 
is 27. So what is just B? Three. three. Perfect. So let's plug that into our formula. So what goes into my first parentheses? 2S plus what? A plus B. 3. 2S plus 3. So it's 2s squared, so it's this whole thing squared. So what is 2s squared? 4s squared. We have to square the 2 and square the s, so this would be 4s squared. Minus, what is a times b? 6s. And then plus, what's b squared? nine and then we can't forget we took out our gcf in the beginning 2s squared so we have to put that in the answer too so this would be our answer all right so next we're going to factor by grouping so we've grouped before we love factoring by grouping grouping is when you have four terms so anytime we have four terms we're going to factor by grouping we group the first two together and group the second two together. We take out the GCFs. Each group. And we have to make sure the inside parentheses parts are the same. Because the inside parts go together and then the outside parts will go together. So let's look at example three. So I see I have four terms, so I know I'm gonna factor by grouping. I'm gonna group the first two and group the second two. What's my GCF in the first group? Z squared. So I'm gonna take out a Z squared. What am I left with when I take out a Z squared? Z plus five, perfect. Now we're going to do the same thing in the second group. What's my GCF? Negative Why negative 4 and not positive 4? Because we want to make them both positive because it needs to be that z plus 5. We need the same thing on the inside. So I'm going to take out the minus 4, the negative 4. And what am I left with? Z plus 5. Awesome. The inside parts have to be the same because those two are gonna to go together and make one z plus five. What's gonna be in my other parentheses? z squared minus four. So the two outside parts go together into the other parentheses. Now, can I factor this anymore? What's special about z squared minus four? They're both perfect squares. So this is the difference of squares. So difference of squares factors into a plus and a minus. So how would we factor z squared minus four? z plus 2 and z minus 2. Awesome, because our two factors of 4 would be 2 and 2. And then we still need that z plus 5 at the start. So this would be my answer. So just like I said in the beginning, what's going to make these different than what we've done in the past is that you will probably be able to factor more than once. So we factored by grouping, but then we had to factor again with our difference of squares. So let's look at four. What type of question is four? The difference or sum, because we're adding, so it's the sum of cubes. So I need to use my formula. What do the signs in the sum of formula do? Plus, minus, plus. plus, minus, plus. So it'll be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So 
So now a cubed is a cubed. So what is just a? A. And b cubed is 27. So what is just b? 3. So when I plug everything in, what would go in my first parentheses? A plus 3. What would come next? A squared minus 3A plus 3 squared, which would be 9. Perfect. So that would be my answer. So for these, the factoring stops. We don't have two factors of 9 that add to negative 3. It can't be factored anymore. All right, and last one, number 6. How am I going to factor number 6? Grouping. So I group the first two, group the second two. What's the GCF in the first group? X squared. So I'm going to take out an X squared. What am I left with? X plus 4. What's the GCF in the second group? Negative 4. Oh, negative. Just, just kidding. What is my GCF? Negative 1. I was testing you, making sure you're paying attention. What goes into the parentheses if I take out a negative one? So x plus 4. We just change the signs of both of them. So what's going to go into my first group? x plus 4. And in the second group, I take what I put on the outside, so x squared minus 1. Am I done here? Can I factor any more? How? X squared minus 1 is special because it's the difference of squares. 1 is a perfect square. So remember, it factors into a plus and a minus. So, awesome. X plus 1 and X minus 1. And then we can't forget about that X plus 4 in the beginning. So this would be our answer. So after you factor, always check and make sure that you can't factor anymore. If you have an x squared term, make sure you're checking to see if it's the difference of squares. What if this was x squared plus 1? Could I factor it anymore? No. no. So you can only factor it when it's the difference of squares when you're subtracting. Difference means subtract. So if it was adding two perfect squares, can't factor it. It'd be done. Any other questions here?